Percy Jackson and the Rorden verse as a whole is a franchise that means a lot to me. It helped shape my interests in fantasy and mythology, and helped me gain the interest in storytelling and writing that I have today. It's a franchise that's very special to me, which is why seeing it represented on my favorite web show, Death Battle, would be one of the greatest things to ever happen. I already went into detail about a matchup that I would want for Percy in my most wanted episode video, which you should totally watch after this one if you haven't. Uh, but what about the rest of the cast? Well, that's the goal for this video, to find a good, or at least passable matchup for each main character in the Rorden verse. That means the prophecy of seven kids, as well as some extra characters and characters from other books in the Rorden verse, which you'll see later. I'm not really putting that many rules on this list, except for the fact that I'm not allowed to use one series more than two times. Uh, by the way, finding matchups for some of these characters was a nightmare. Uh, some of these characters didn't have pages on the fandom wiki, which is where I normally find uh, matchups for characters. And half of the characters on this list didn't have matchups, and those who did had like three or four effects, and they were all very surface level or just like just not good. So it was a miracle that I was able to find matchups for everyone that wasn't Percy. Uh, but you know, I managed to make it work, and I'm pretty proud of the list that I have here. Pretty sure that's everything, no real point dragging this on any further, let's get into it. So I already talked about my preferred matchup for Percy Jackson being Aqualad already in my most wanted Death Battle episode video, so if you want to hear more about that matchup in particular, in detail, I suggest going to that video uh, because there's something else I want to talk about for this segment. Uh, I'll quickly go over the connections briefly. Uh, they're the apprentice slash son of a powerful and famous sea king that grows into their own and joins a group of other heroes to save the world. Pretty solid, but I'm not going to be counting that matchup for this list since there's a different matchup for Percy that I didn't mention during that video that I do want to talk about here. And that is Percy Jackson versus Harry Potter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the preferred matchup for both of them and I can see why. Both were seemingly normal kids that had a hard life growing up but learn that they're actually part of a larger magical world and end up saving the world from an ancient sealed evil after going to an isolated area, uh, like camp slash school to train and hone their powers. Uh, I don't mind this matchup. Uh, I like it a lot, actually. Uh, this probably stands even with Percy versus Aqualad. Uh, I think I prefer, you know, after looking back at it in hindsight, I think I prefer this matchup a little bit more, but also a little bit less at the same time. Uh, because Harry and Percy are already compared outside of versus matchups a lot to the point that when the Percy Jackson books were coming out the reviews on the back said you know Percy Jackson was the new Harry Potter or the modern Harry Potter which annoyed me quite a lot because I always thought like oh Percy Jackson's way better than Harry Potter but it was it was a you know it's dumb and it's a very petty reason for not wanting a matchup or not preferring a matchup over the other uh, but you know, I still like this matchup. I think if I woke up on the different side of the bed, I might prefer this one over Aqualad. Uh, which means that video is already outdated, which is pretty funny. Uh, not really much I could say I want from this matchup outside of, you know, clever uses of Harry's magic that I don't know anything about. Uh, maybe sneak in Blackjack for Percy and just have Percy's water effects look pretty. Like use the same water effects you used for Korra versus Storm, which looks, you know, which looked great. Uh, do something like that. Uh... I don't really know how you'd have like close quarters combat because one focuses on shooting magic spells and the other one has a sword, which I don't even think, according to my research, uh, I don't even think the sword could hurt Harry, which would be a funny joke, actually. I'd actually like to see that as a joke. Uh, yeah, I think I've talked about this matchup as much as I can, really. It's a very simple but highly requested matchup, at least for me. I would like to see it. Uh, probably in terms of like death battle, I'd like to see this one more than Aqualad because it would be, you know, not another DC character. Yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, Percy versus Harry Potter. All right, moving on to the next one. We have Annabeth Chase versus Katniss Everdeen. Uh, this one doesn't have as solid a connection as some of the other matchups on this list, but it's better than Annabeth versus Hermione. So this is what I'm going to be going with. Uh, the connections are they're both girls who survive and fight, I guess. I don't know. I never read or watched The Hunger Games myself, so I don't know anything about Katniss except for the fact she shoots arrows good. Uh, not really much I want from this matchup 
if it happens at all, except for, I guess, just good close quarters combat, because that seems to be one of the main things. And also, I guess, the strategic mind of the two, because that also seems like a key connecting factor. Uh, Annabeth probably wins, which is cool. Um, I can't see this fight happening anytime soon, because, like, if they are going to use Katniss, they'll probably use someone else, someone with, like, better connections and stuff. And I think out of all the Rordenverse characters that are out there that could be put into a death battle, I don't think Annabeth is going to be one of the first ones, if one they're going to use at all. I feel like Percy will probably be the first one, and I think characters like Jason or Carter or one of the more, I guess, main characters, even though Annabeth is also a main character, I just don't think it's very likely that she'll get a matchup anytime soon. But, you know could be cool to have a more grounded fight in death battle we don't really get those very often last one we got was like fawn versus wick uh but yeah annabeth versus katniss thalia grace versus phosphora i think that's how you pronounce her name both are female fighters tied to greek mythology that use lightning powers uh not the best connections but it's definitely one of my favorites on this list uh and probably my preferred matchup uh, I was going back and forth between Phosphora or Pyra Nikos from Ruby for Thalia, but settled on Phosphora because the animation potential sounded better and the connections were better, even though the connections were already pretty surface level to begin with. Uh, in short, probably one of my favorites on this list. I wasn't expecting Thalia, of all people, to get one of the better matchups, but here we are. Uh, Phosphora probably wins, because, but I've never played Kid Icarus, so I wouldn't know for sure. I just know that hit is ridiculously fast so if they scale her to him uh probably wouldn't be a contest but still could be fun luke castilian versus draco malfoy from harry potter uh both were once proud members of their school slash camp but were led astray by an evil mentor and served as a main villain for basically the entire series before realizing the way they were going about things was wrong and ended up doing the right thing in the end and saving the world uh pretty solid connections and is probably Luke's best matchup. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is on Draco's side because I haven't read much of Harry Potter as of writing this, uh, but I do like it. Luke likely wins, but I could be wrong. This one, I, I don't, I'm just not interested in it. Like, I like Luke, but I don't really feel anything towards Draco. That might change if I read Harry Potter in the future, but as of right now, this one's just kind of just there, and I felt like including it because I like Luke and I wanted to include him, but you know, it's there. Nico D'Angelo versus Death the Kid from Soul Eater. Both are suns slash incarnations of beings that rule over the underworld and go to a special safe place, uh, Camp Afflood and the Weapons Academy from Soul Eater, uh, and learn more about themselves and eventually grow up to become one of the more powerful beings in their world. Uh, one of the better ones on this list, I know I keep saying that, but this one actually has like solid connections. Uh, compared to the other ones that just have pretty surface level connections, but good animation potential. This one actually has good themes and also good animation potential. Uh, regardless, I, I don't know anything about Soul Eater, uh, but I know for a fact it's better for Nico over the Devil from Cuphead. I'm not kidding. It was on the wiki. It was dumb. Anyway, Death probably wins. I did like mild research on this one apparently death is just crazy faster than him uh which is fine i never really liked nico so i'm not losing sleep over this i don't really care much about verdicts anyway uh but yeah i like this one quite a bit solid theme solid potential for just an all-around fun episode and i think this one's probably more likely because nico is one of the more popular characters uh but i don't know we'll see jason grace versus icarus from glory of hercules both are sons of Zeus who had amnesia. Look, Jason had nothing. I, I tried to find a matchup that was good or at least passable, and this was the only one I could find. It's not bad, honestly. I don't know anything about Glory of Hercules. I know it's like a game on the DS or something. I don't I don't know. This this was a very just I guess filler matchup. But you know, it could be cool. Have Jason do some cool lightning stuff, sneak in his horse. Uh, Tempest, I think. I can't remember the name. I'm pretty sure it's Tempest. You know, it's fine. I'm not dying to see it, but it's Jason's best matchup, which is kind of sad. Uh, there's not really much else I can say here. Uh, moving on. Piper versus 
Agent Connecticut from Red vs. Blue. Both are cool girls that use knives, I guess. Piper had even less than Jason. I'm sorry. For all the Piper fans out there that was expecting a super crazy thematic matchup, I'm sorry. She has nothing. Like, the Death Battle Wiki had nothing on her. The only other thing that came to mind was Ramona Flowers, but I don't know enough about Scott Pilgrim to sell that matchup, so I'm just going with the only one I could find on the wiki. Uh, you're probably starting to notice a pattern that a lot of these matchups are going to be very surface level. So, sorry about that if you were expecting more thematically rich or interesting matchups. Leo Valdez versus Amber from Genshin Impact. Both lost their closest relative at a young age and dedicated their lives to helping people by building things and also possess fire abilities. Uh, this is the only one I could find that doesn't boil down to both use fire or both build things. Uh, I've never played Genshin and I never will, so I don't know if anything I said about Amber is accurate. So if I got something wrong, I apologize. But if I didn't, this is probably my favorite fight for Leo and probably my favorite, one of my favorites on this list because it has some good animation potential with all the fire abilities and Leo's different inventions. Uh, so I probably wouldn't be upset if it got announced. I mean, I wouldn't be upset if any Percy Jackson matchup got announced. Uh, but this is one that I kind of rank on the more so the higher echelon of this list. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. It's definitely one of the better ones, or at least ones with like better connections and better potential for fights and stuff. Hazel versus Toph. Both can control minerals and the earth. Uh, that's it. Uh, are you starting to notice how hard it was to come up with matches for some of these guys? Uh, that's it. There's nothing else for this matchup. That's it. Moving on. Frank Zhang versus Beast Boy. Both can shapeshift into different animals. That's it. Uh, honestly, unlike some of the other ones... Uh, despite how surface level it is, I don't mind this matchup, and with such a unique and straightforward power set, you could have a cool fight with them constantly swapping between different animals as the fight goes on, and eventually ends with them out of energy and having to fight in their human forms. It's cool conceptually, even though I'm pretty sure Beast Boy has better matchups out there that aren't Frank, but you know, one of the better ones on this list. Carter Kane versus Yugi Moto. Both are powerful magic sorcerers that are the avatar slash host of a strong and famous Egyptian god slash pharaoh, that being Horos and Atem. Uh, I like this matchup a lot, honestly. I've probably missed a lot since I haven't really seen Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's better than most other stuff I could find on Carter or think of for Carter. This is probably the best slash only matchup for Carter. Uh, I don't see him getting on death battle if he does... I don't know who he'd fight. Yugi is probably fighting Ash, which I'm fine with. I definitely prefer over this one, but I definitely like the idea of them just being hosts for big, strong pharaohs. It's just, it's just cool. It's a cool idea for a death battle, you know? But, you know, this one's just kind of in the middle. Like, it's not bad, but it's not, like, the best. Sadie Kane versus June Moon, the Enchantress, from DC Comics. Uh, I originally wanted to do Sadie versus Hermione for Sadie, but I already technically had two Harry Potter matchups on this list, so I had to come up with something else. And I managed to come up with this, uh, Sadie Kane versus the Enchantress. Uh, both are powerful magicians in their worlds that are hosts for powerful magical entities, that being Isis and the Enchantress. What's interesting, though, is that there's a bit of contrast between the two. Uh, Sadie learns to coexist and work with Isis, while June fears losing control of herself to in the Enchantress, so she basically fights to keep her controlled, uh, which is cool. Uh, this fight isn't bad. It's not what I'm overly fond of or excited to see happen. It's really just here because making a matchup for Carter and not Sadie would have felt wrong. Uh, but in reality, I think, I feel like I keep saying this, but... It's one that I like. I feel like it's right below Percy versus Harry. Uh, maybe, like, third. I don't know. Uh, I haven't really, like, decided on, like, where I'd rank them compared to each other. Like, which ones I'd want to see more. Uh, but I do like this one. It has solid animation potential since the creativity and craziness of magic just comes with that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah. Sadie versus the Enchantress. Not bad. And, you know, decent. And that brings this to a close. Uh, this was an interesting, sometimes irritating, but also fun video to make. 
uh, because coming up with matchups for some of these characters, let alone finding anything to say about them, was very difficult. Uh, you can definitely see that with stuff like Jason vs. Icarus and Hazel vs. Toph. Uh, this is really just a way to, I guess, capitalize on the kind of Percy Jackson craze I've been having recently, and also just a way to kind of try out this format of coming up with matchups for different franchises. Uh, I might do this in the future with like other franchises or maybe just other concepts, other matchups. Like maybe I'll do a season list of 2v2 battles or battle royale fights or, you know, stuff like that. This was fun to make. I had fun making it. Uh, though, if any of you watching, the viewer, if you have any better Rordenverse matchups that I didn't bring up here, let me know, please, for the love of God. Uh... <laughs> Uh, in all seriousness, I actually am really interested to see what other matchups in this universe are floating around out there because I feel like in terms of like the versus matchup community and just the versus community in general, uh, Percy Jackson isn't really talked about all that much outside of Percy versus Harry. Um, even though I know within the grand scheme of the Rorden verse, there are probably some interesting versus matchups lurking around. So if there are any out there that I didn't cover or you would have liked to see me do, uh, you know, let me know. I'm interested, just genuinely. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, that's all I really got. Season 9 ranking uh, will be coming within the next few months, and a prediction video will, as well, probably quickly after. Yeah, I will never be good at outros, so <laughs> uh, take care.